Hello, dear friends. I'm out here at the bus stop. Sun's going down, so it might get dark on us, but thought I'd share a little something with you tonight. Um, haven't been sharing much lately because I haven't really had anything that was, you know, that I knew was right to share. But, so I'll tell you a little story. I hope it's okay if I chat for a little bit with you. And I hope y'all are doing good. I think about you. Pray for you. Um, just going through life day to day, aren't we? Learning lessons through the good times and bad. The Lord always has something to teach us. And so, um, yesterday I was at an event and, um, I was sitting up, uh, I was sitting, and a couple of women that I know, that I'm not like bestest of friends with, but that I definitely know um, pretty good, came and sit, sat right exactly in front of me and did not acknowledge me that I was there for the whole over an hour that we sat there, didn't, nothing. Um, and, all right, old Misty, Misty acting and thinking out of her flesh, just, I don't know, it was just gnawing at me, and I was just like, you know, um, just because I don't have, you know, the money you've got, and you know, this, that, and the other, you know, at least you could turn around and say hello. That would be nice. And it kind of hurt my feelings, all this stuff. Now, I'm just being real honest with y'all, right? I hope that's okay to do. Um, these thoughts were going through my head, you know? And so that ended and went home and everything, and... I'm not sure if it was last night or today that, you know, I guess the Lord brought it to my mind. And I just realized, you know, that I had judged them in my thoughts. I don't know why they didn't speak to me. Maybe they didn't even notice. Maybe they were really down, going through a hard time. I, I have no idea. That's the thing that... Like in the last couple of videos or something I was sharing about, we cannot know the intent and motivation that's in a person's heart. So while I wanted to believe that they didn't speak to me because I just wouldn't dress nice enough or didn't have enough money or wasn't in the same social status, that's what Fleshly Misty was wanting to think. I have no idea what the motivation, the underlying underneath of why they did not speak to me. I don't know it. But my mind wanted to assume I knew and it wanted to judge them because of it. Does that make sense? Y'all understand what I mean? Has that ever happened to you? Well, the Lord let me know. Look, you, you know, he's so gentle too when he lets you know. Is that what y'all found? He's so gentle and kind. You know, I've even said before, I'm getting off topic, but Lord, if I could just correct my children or anybody dealing with anybody as gentle as you are with me, that would be so amazing. You know, that's I want that. But anyway, so he just kind of brought it up, brought it up in my mind. Brought it up in my mind. And because it came up into my mind two or three times, I realized the Lord was wanting to talk with me about it. Deal with me on it. You see what I mean? And so I just said, you know, I, he showed me. He, he, how did he show me? I don't know. Because he's truth and he's light. And... um we live our lives in the light of His presence, by the light of His Word. 
And so the Spirit does convict and let us know when we did something that was contrary to Christ. It was contrary to the way in which we're being made and conformed to His image. He lets us know. And I know I'm getting off topic, but I do want to say a few years ago, even one year ago, I wasn't as sensitive to some of the things I'm as sensitive to now. You know, and 10 years ago, when I first started walking with the Lord, what was crossing my mind was the furthest thing from what, what I was thinking about. Back then, the Lord was dealing with me on outward things. He was, he was, he was changing and working in a way that, you know, and two, I was more focused on, you know, letting my mouth loose. Like what was coming out of my mouth. I, I'm afraid I'm not explaining this well. Um, outward things, you know, like gossiping or like I said, letting my mouth fly loose and saying whatever came to my mind. Being angry and just telling somebody off. Getting offended and just all these kind of things. Or indulging in a particular habit, maybe. Um, that's the kind of things it was about early on in my walk. But as I walk with them more and more and more, I didn't try, but just something in me, I became more sensitive to, well, I don't call it sin, but sensitive to it, you know? And that doesn't take anybody else showing you those things. The Lord, by His Spirit, will begin to do that in you more and more. And you probably already know what I'm talking about. Haven't you found that? You know, used to you could do some things and it didn't bother your conscience, not one bit. A little time down the road, walking with the Lord, you became more sensitive to things. And now your conscience might be pricked very quick when something happens, right? So anyway, let me get back on track. So I just, what did I do? I just said, you're right, Lord. I, I judged them. I have no clue why they acted the way they acted. But yet, I passed a judgment on them in my mind. Y'all, they did not know what I thought. Nobody else knew what I was doing in here. Only the Lord knew that. And so when he brought it to my attention, only the Lord knew. And in his kindness and grace, he was letting me know. So that I could say, Lord, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. It just was happening. It just happened. You know? And, um, now, why do I share this with you? Well, today, here I was, I was feeling kind of broken, you know, because I had done this, you know. I knew the Lord had forgiven me and He would help me. You know, who in the world, you know, can you control your thoughts? I haven't gotten to that place yet. I haven't. Now, as soon as I realize I'm having thoughts that are wrong, or when the Lord convicts me, I can go to Him with them. But I'm telling you, I, I can't do that. Um, so when I realize I've done it, all I can do is, Lord, I'm so sorry. Please change this about me. There are no disciplines or some set formula or any rules or regulations that will cause my thoughts to calm down, quieten down, and be righteous and holy all of a sudden. It's, it ain't. No amount of any good work I do. It takes the Spirit of the Lord. It takes Christ's power to change a human thought, the Bible says. I don't have that scripture right down for y'all, but it does. 
So I must just trust in the Lord. Trust him for what? Trust him that any time I step out of line like that, he will correct me. That way I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about messing up here and messing up there and be full of fear and feel like I'm just like, like this all the time. He's going to show me if I did something wrong. He's going to show you. He will. And two, why else do I share that? Is because really in times past, all right, the Lord has helped me greatly with this, but really in times past, anytime I felt like I failed or messed up or did wrong, here I am even sharing things with y'all. Well, just because I'm walking with the Lord and I do see big changes in my life, others are able to see something different in me. Does that make me some superior, holy, and righteous, just, I don't know what you would call it, somebody like that to look up to? No, it don't. Why? Because I'm just... I'm flesh. I'm flesh and blood. I am the creation of the Lord. And it is His power and His Spirit working within me, within my mind, within my heart, within my conscience to bring about this change. So I don't get credit for it. Matter of fact, I'll lead into this. I hope I get back to prayer. I wish y'all could remind me to get back to that, but I can't, but you can't, can you? Let me go to, to here, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Y'all all know the scripture. Paul, pleading for the thorn to be removed, okay? So what did the Lord say? My grace is, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. You, my grace is sufficient for you, Misty, and your name. Put your name in there. My power is made perfect in your weakness. His power is put on display through my weakness. It doesn't mean I go out trying to fail and mess up, but when it does happen, I'm weak, you know, at that point. I'm more humbled at that point, right? Going to the Lord. And Paul said, I'll boast because of this. I will boast all the more in my weaknesses. So that Christ's power may rest on me. Now I'm going to get to the prayer. That right there connects to what happened later on today. Well, I just had everybody on my mind, you know, that so many situations, just talking this one, that one, whatever going on. And I wanted to go to the Lord to pray for these people. And I was like, oh, Lord, I'm coming to you. Even though, you know, here I am just being corrected for judging others in my thoughts, which I think is huge. Now, for you right now, it may not be. Don't let the words I say condemn you. Follow the Spirit. Follow the Lord. Each of us are in a different place, okay? But for me, in my walk so far, that is where it's gotten to for me, okay? And I said, here, I've just judged all these people, my thoughts, and now I want to turn around and pray for them. That's how I normally would do. That's how I want to do. But, and I used to, this plagued me big time. Not so much anymore. By the grace of God, it doesn't but still yet it humbles me, is that whenever I would mess up or the Lord would show me something I'd done wrong and I felt bad about it, I would even not want to go to the Lord to pray. I, I just didn't have it in me to lift my eyes up to Him to pray. I was weak. I had messed up. I... I I had a limitation in me. I had something that I could not change. I'm waiting on him to change it. And I might mess up and fall and stumble. I'm waiting on him to change this in me. But I still wanted to go to the Lord and pray, right? That right there. Let me get to this right here.
Hebrews 4.15 says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses because he was tempted in every way, though he remained without sin, because we couldn't, and he did for us. And so therefore we can go, on in verse 16, go boldly and confidently to the throne of grace in our time of need. I needed forgiveness. I needed the Lord to wash away that guilt from my mind. And I had to, I had to, in faith, trust that now I go to the Lord, I ask him to forgive me. He promises in his word to forgive me if I ask him and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Cleanse me of the guilt associated with that ever how I messed up. Didn't he promise that? And that's why I can then be bold and confident then to turn around and pray for the one that I just judged. I, then I could lift up and pray for these people. And the Lord let me know while I was praying that this afternoon. That this is really to him a beautiful place. It is a lowly and one who's contrite and broken in spirit. I couldn't make myself be that way. A circumstance came. I kind of messed up. It put me in that low place. It humbled me. I hope this is my consent. So in your mess ups or when you think you mess up or the Lord shows you something, you know, maybe you want to be a certain way, but you see yourself opposite from that right now. The Lord will change this about you and work on this with you and teach you and train you as you go. But in your mess ups, don't let that stop you from going to the Lord. Don't let that steer you off in a different direction. Don't sweep those things under the rug. Be quick to go to the Lord and confess it to Him. Receive grace and mercy freely. That is what's so wonderful. Getting to know how merciful He is. Getting to know more and more through everything, no matter how good, bad, or ugly, how forgiving, how faithful, how understanding He is, how He empathizes with our weaknesses. You know, that's the kind of high priest that we serve. That's the kind of friend that we have in Jesus Christ. That's the kind of Savior that we claim hold of. That is our hope. He is our hope that every word in these scriptures are true, you know, and we can hold fast to them, allowing our faith to grow. So I know I kind of jumped around a little bit, and I hope and pray that it came out the right way and that it could help somebody. You know, that's my prayer. You know, I, let me read this couple other scriptures I got here and I'm going to close up. I know it got long. I'm sorry about that. Second Corinthians 11.30. Paul said, if I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast about the things that show how weak I am. That's why I'm sharing this with you. That's only why I'm sharing this with you. That if somebody else feels weak or like they, they're never going to be who they want to be in the Lord or it seems like they mess up with their mouth or their speech or whatever it might be, that's a good thing that the Lord is convicting you. He's disciplining you because He disciplines the ones He loves like a true son. We don't go do it on purpose, do we? With all of our heart, we want to please the Lord. But when those times do come, I'm sharing this, my weakness, to let you know. That there where sin did abound, much more does Christ abound. Much more. He's so good. 
It is so good. Let me see if I got another scripture. Did I read 2 Corinthians 12, 9? Yes, I did. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. We aren't sufficient in and of ourselves to claim anything. We aren't sufficient in and of ourselves yet, y'all. Please don't be tricked into thinking that we, in our own strength and power, can straighten ourselves up. We're emptying the cross of Christ of its power if we think that. We really are. All of this, all of this from start to finish is faith in the Son of God. And what, how perfect and righteous and holy He is. And that He would actually come and dwell within us to make us into His own to conform us into his image. Now one day, and I long for it, I long to be innocent. I long to be perfect like the Lord. Perfect in all my ways too. I long to not harm anyone ever again. Whether it be with my speech or actions or whatever it might be sometimes. You know, I long to only live, breathe, move, Everything out of love, you know, just like the Lord. And that day will come. That day will come for when we see him face to face, we will be like him. And so, you know, just because of him is why. It's the only reason I still remain. Because I've messed up so many times, y'all, in my walk with the Lord. And I felt so much guilt and shame and condemnation over it until I learned that there's no condemnation in Christ. That's what His blood covers. Our guilt and our shame. Cleansing our guilty conscience. And that produces in us more love for Him. More appreciation. More thanksgiving. You know, for him and, and his power and his goodness and what he is willing to do for us. You know? So, I'm sorry that went so long. I really feel like I was all over the place, but I'm just going to trust the Lord with it. I hope and pray it could help somebody. So, if you have fallen down this week or feel like you've messed up in a certain area or the Lord showed you something that's not quite right, just go to Him. Just go to Him. He's so gentle and kind and understanding. And He understands, the Bible says, what we're made of. Because He made us. Sympathizing with empathizing with all our weaknesses. He understands. You know, and when you feel so ashamed to even lift your head up to turn to Him, remember, He's right there, full of grace and mercy for you in your time of need. All right? He's so good. So I love y'all. Okay? I'm I praying for you. And I hope to talk to you again real soon. Alright. Take care. May the Lord bless you. Amen.